We have it, Mr. Vinny Tortorich. Uh, what's cool about Vinny is he's Hollywood's go-to guy for fitness and weight loss. He's actually been uh, in L.A. now for over 20 years and uh, has uh, been coined America's angriest trainer. Uh, Vinny's also the author of a terrific book called Fitness Confidential, and I really enjoy it. In fact, uh, I uh, uh, was reading it up on my uh, rooftop uh, deck here in Spain t- this morning uh, and uh, just, uh, just found it really funny as well as a lot of great information. So, Vinny, welcome to the show, and uh, how's everything today? Dan, thanks for having me, man. This is great, and everything is great. Uh, I don't know if you can see out the windows behind me, but we're finally getting rain. We've been in a drought here in Southern California for, I think, about 30 years, <laughs> and it's raining, and it's funny because Serena just walked in from a 12-mile run, and she was drenched. So, it, it, you know, everything is great in L.A. We, we, we won't burn to death anymore. We have rain. So oh, I'm, I'm very happy today. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, Spain is, bit, Spain is similar, uh, similar problems. A lot, very dry this year, but we've been having a lot of rain in the last uh, two weeks. So, uh, so that's good to, uh, to, to reduce the forest fires there as well as here. So awesome. I thought that the rain falls mainly on the plain in Spain, right? Is that how well, it you goes? Know, or that's, is that- that's the famous, famous, uh, one of the famous lines, but it's actually, it's also, it's also incorrect because most of the rain actually goes to the, uh, to the coastal areas. Be- and that's because it blows in, you know, storms come from the ocean right? and they hit the mountains, uh, on the, on the West coast of Spain. So the number, the highest rainfall is in the Northwest and the second highest is in the, in the Southwest. Well, you know, that normally happens as you know, Los Angeles is right on, you know, the Pacific ocean, uh, and that actually happens all, you know, if you go all the way up to Seattle and all that area, it rains like every day. It rains as if you were in Louisiana or you're from Natchez, Mississippi. So you understand rain. We grew oh, yeah. up with real rain and it rains like that up in Seattle. But there's some kind of pressure system that sits right over uh, L.A. and the San Diego area, which gives it blue skies 99% of the time, we never get rain. It's good if you like to ride bikes and go out and run. It's really bad if you try to live here because you're living in a desert that happens to be right on the water. Right. Right. Yeah, that's pretty unique. Very, definitely, definitely unique. So, fantastic. Well, well, Vinny, let's, um, let's jump into, into some, of your, some of your story. There's, um, you know, there's so much interesting stuff here. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what uh, what brought you to uh, what brought you to from Louisiana to uh, to Los Angeles? Well, that's a great tie-in. the The truth of the matter is, I was tired of the rain, and um, if I could be real technical about it, um, I had gotten into cycling, and way back then, thirty some odd years ago, and people will not know what I'm talking about, but if your bicycle got wet enough. If you had a high-end bicycle, not like a, you know, like if you had a, a race-style bike, which is what I was doing, the bearings weren't sealed yet. Right. So water would actually, you know, in those old Conagos and Pinarellos and all these bikes we were riding from Italy with the reverse threads and everything, they, they, you would have to like pull these, the bottom bracket apart and you would have to pull your hubs apart and soak the uh, bearings, they would all fall out. They yes. weren't sealed. And we, I would drop mine. I would keep a little can of diesel right outside of my uh, shed at my house. And I would drop them in there. And you would have to let them, you know, all the grease and grime fall out. And then you would have to repack them with grease and put them back in again. Wow, that's, that is, that's amazing. Yeah. It, like every week when it rains, you would have to do that. That's not the only reason... Every time I went out for a run, it was raining. When I would try to train my clients, it was raining. But every time I came to visit my friend, Big Daddy Callahan, who had moved here during the uh, Cajun craze when they were pulling every chef out of New Orleans to come to L.A. to, to cook black and fish, right? you know, I, I would come to visit Big Daddy and I would bring a bike and I would, uh, you know, I would take my running shoes and, and I would have all of that with me. And um, I would be out here and... I couldn't find rain. And I was like, oh my God, there's a reason to move to LA. Besides that, I, 
I noticed that there was a problem with childhood obesity 30 years ago, I mean, 25 years ago. Nobody was talking about it then. I saw the rise. I saw what was happening with the kids I was teaching at Newman School. And I knew that this would be a health crisis in this country before anyone was talking about it. And I wanted to get out here and push it. The problem is Hollywood did not want to hear from it at all. Wow, fascinating. Fascinating story. So why is it that, um, that so much of what, uh, you know, we... I mean, on the one hand, we turn on the we turn on any uh, any type of media, and we see, you know, health and fitness information. Uh, we're sort of bombarded by what's what's supposed to be good information. Yet at the same time, we have the we've seen the obesity rate and uh, overweight rate go to where it is now, where it's uh, we're looking at two out of three Americans being overweight or obese. What do you think is is the the three? causes of this if you could you know two or three biggest reasons well the number one reason is money uh the number two reason is money and the number three reason is um uh, money uh health and fitness is controlled by you know big companies and people with bottom lines people who have investors um coca-cola for instance you wouldn't think that they're in the fitness game but they are they own gatorade and they own you know, water, you know, Dasani and, uh, you know. Sure. I could go on and on. Um, Kellogg's, you know, is a giant company that's making cereal that's going to make you heart healthy and get you in shape. Just eat Special K and you'll get thin and, you know, th- you know, eat uh, Cocoa Pebbles and you will get, you know, nine essential vitamins you know, type of thing. Right. So I, you know, I could go on and on for the next two hours and talk about how big companies that you don't think is in the health game and fitness game, they're the biggest players. And, you know, the best way to get you to eat anything is to sugar it up because it tastes good and you're going to eat it. And God, if you think it's going to help you, then you've just won the battle. But look at what's happening. We're not getting thinner and, and more heart healthy. We're getting actually fatter, and you know now we have metabolic syndrome, and we have fatty liver disease, and we have sleep apnea, and we have type 2 diabetes, and I could go on for the next 20 minutes with what we have now, and we could thank those companies for it. Yeah, that's, that is uh, very, very revealing, and it's, uh, that's a point that I think very few people actually probably have heard before, because you sure don't hear that on, on most of our corporate-owned uh, TV stations, do you? <laughs> No, you don't. And I mean, even if, you know, people want to be virtuous and they'll go, you know what, I've gained a few pounds. I, I think I'm going to train myself and I'll run a marathon. And you go, or I'm going to do a triathlon or any of these things. And you'll find out that chocolate milk is now sponsoring these events. They're telling you that chocolate milk is the best thing you can drink after you do these races, which is ludicrous at best and nutty and crazy also at best. But, but you get what I'm saying, right? Sure, it's like, sure. And, and you get your swag bag. I don't know if you run or do any of that stuff, but... I used to. I, yeah, I, a little bit here and there, but got some bad knees. Well, well you've been but to I've those been events, there. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I've organized 10K races myself uh, in an earlier part of my life. And uh, yeah, I yeah. Don't know what you mean, the swag bag things, and you get the sponsors. And, and you know who the first... The first sponsor that uh, that was that comes, to, I mean, the few I was actually probably I was probably involved in, I don't know, thirty or forty races, uh, right? And and Coca Cola was always the first one that uh, we didn't we didn't have you know they were ready they were they come to you oh they, yeah they you don't go to, to them they they come to you yeah <clears throat> uh, I, I've noticed that too because I have a lot of friends that sponsor that put on a lot of races and you know Coca Cola actually seeks you out in those oh, yeah. situations. Um, and then you have companies like Power Bar, which is a sugar product, and, sure. and Cliff Bar, which is basically a candy also. Uh, you have Goo, which is like icing, you know, yes. in a, you know, a Mylar packaging. You know, it's just you, you, on and on and on, and they give you all of this stuff for free. So there's this weird cognitive dissonance that tells you, wait, this must be healthy because the guy who's promoting the race is giving me this when the guy promoting the race is just trying to make enough money so that the poor guy could put on another race. You know? Right. So, you know that deal. You know. Oh yeah. People, 
People ask me all the time, why don't you promote races? Your friend Chris Kostman does. And I went, Chris Kostman goes crazy trying to promote those races. Yes, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like a, it's a heck of a lot of work. I mean, I was doing yeah. it as part of a a part of another of a job working for a big hospital based fitness and sports medicine center. So I had a salary and so it was fine, but but man, it's a lot of work, a lot of details. And Coca Cola yeah. does great, you know, they're very they were great to work with. Obviously, you know, like, right. hey, how many, how many, ta- how many, uh, you know, how much Coke do you want? Great. And a few Diet Cokes? Sure. And, and can we throw in some, you know, this, that, and the other? And they were, you know, it was all part of their very, very good marketers. And they understand it was, you know, basically, basically they're being able to represent and get free advertising and associated Absolutely. with these healthy events. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of those events will, they won't even hide it and try to do the Gatorade thing through Coke. They will give you Coke. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, by all means. By all yeah. means. It's, uh, it's, yeah, they do it. They are, they are a great, uh, great marketing machine. That is not, uh, no doubt. No yeah. doubt at all. So let's, uh, let's transition into, into, uh, something that connects with that, which is, um, you know, there's a debate, you know, when we talk about about the weight problems in America and in the Western world, because we've sort of, you know, trans, we've sort of con- transferred our, uh, you know, type, our, our eating style to all over. In fact, I had a friend who jokes around. He says, you know, if, if you just uh, send American food into Ethiopia, in six months we'll have obesity there. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? It's the truth. So, so why, so why is exercise a horrible way to lose weight? Well, to suggest that exercise 